like to invite the Chief Technology Officer of uh, Ericsson, Ulf Evelsen, please. Thank you. Um, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored as the CTO of Ericsson to address you this afternoon, talk a little bit about networks and the next generation networks. But before I do that, I'd like to just celebrate for a second the achievements of this industry. In the last three decades, we have shrunk the world given the power of voice communication and data communication into the hands of five billion people in this world. This year, in uh, 2014, we will pass seven billion subscriptions because people have more than one device. Um, and out of those, close to three billion of those subscriptions will be on smartphones. The default access to the internet today in the world is via a smartphone. Those numbers will grow to around 9 billion subscriptions in 2020 and to around, and now comes, doubling of the number of smartphones, up to 6 billion in 2020. So we're on a very big journey of creation and building new opportunity. This creates also an enormous amount of traffic. Um, talked about here earlier, Three exabytes of data is where we are right now in 2014 for all the mobile systems in the world. In fact, in every minute, today's mobile systems globally produce the exact amount of data that is correspondent to every book ever written, as was mentioned this morning. I just did that calculation backwards. So in that sense, and, and three exabytes of data is three with 18 zeros. Now, that will grow eight times to 2020, up to 25 exabytes of data. Those achievements are really good. And Europe has played a very significant role for these things to happen. Even though the mobile phone was once inv invented in Bell Labs in the United States, it would never truly industrialize. It was here in Europe, in the Nordics, in the beginning of the 80s, that the first G of the Gs were created. Second G, we don't need to mention, that's when we digitalized the systems. And GSM, Group Special Mobile, for those who were around at the time, ended up being global system for mobile communication, something that spread to countries all over the world. We introduced third generation mobile systems with much higher data capacities, 384 kilobits in the downlink, which at the time was staggering after that. LTE was first launched in the Nordics in 2009, which is now the 4G systems that are being rolled out. We have so far been able to achieve around 400 million users in LTE with a fast growth rate. So those things are very good. So why did these things happen? Why were we able to achieve this? And maybe it's just a good learning to look backwards now that we're going to look forward. First of all, it was an innovation regime based on collaboration. Many companies innovating, many companies discussing what the next, next generation technologies are, institutions working on research, universities working on research in collaboration with industry to create next generations. We call that an innovation regime, FRAND, today, and it's based on equal opportunity among the players. Secondly, it was a regula regulatory regime. We were able to provide licenses all over the world on this technology to country after country after country, where Europe took a lead to supply many licenses in the beginning and spread out to be create operators that can provide the technology. And then third but not least, the interoperability, that everything works with each other. It was built on standards and the power of standardization. Now, what can we then do with this? Well, I would argue that we have created the biggest innovation platform that man has ever created. This can become the innovation platform for what we then call the network society, a society where everything that can benefit from a connection will have one. We launched in 2009 the vision in the Mobile World Congress in Barcelona of 50 billion connected devices which took some fire and opened the eyes of what these networks could possibly do in the future. There are some particulars around the technology changes for the next generations, though. 
One is that it's going to be much more of an outside-in approach to connect other industries into this. As car industries, as uh, utility industries, as energy sectors, others are going to make use of these networks. We are going to have to understand from building the network's point of view what those requirements will be. Secondly, we need a new architecture that creates a connection between those clouds that are created as industries are digitalizing and those new type of devices, devices being even cars. And we need then a much higher performance in these networks to do so. This has been a very successful journey so far. But in order to be successful in the future, we are going to need a new journey. And this journey, the ICT industry will take its responsibility as we're already now laying down the foundation for the next generation mobile systems, 5G. 5G we call the G for the network society where everything that can benefit from a connection will have one. High performance connections. We are aiming at a thousand fold capacity, a thousand times more devices, 10 to 100 times more speed in the downlink, up to 20 gigabit perhaps. Uh, we're aiming for latencies, which is one fifth or lower. And we're aiming for battery life lengths of devices that are counted in years in order to uh, have sensors and such things connected. But it's not a one dimensional, dimensional game. It also requires governments, businesses, industries, and individuals to take their responsibility. And it is important, as we talked about here before, in terms of security, in terms of integrity, that individuals learn to act in the network society. It's also important for businesses to act and bring in this technology, be adopted to this technology, and for Europe, which has so strong industrial companies, not the least in the car sector, this presents a great opportunity that they can embrace and that they must embrace. It's also very important, as was talked about here, when it comes to job creation and foster the society into the network society, that government takes a very big responsibility. I can mention, just out of curiosity, that the platform that we've built so far on mobility in Europe is actually employing two million people today. So, by that, I just want to wish us a great journey into the network society, and I would like to thank Vodafone for hosting this great event. Thank you very much. Thank you.